Call to order the meeting of the Greenwood Common Council on Monday, November 20th. If you would stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. After the pledge, please remain standing. We'll be led in prayer this evening by Chaplain David Mark Owens. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. God of all in this very room, we celebrated a few weeks ago the uh, the giving of power and authority, the trust that was given to these folks to lead us with their minds and hearts, and, and we continue to celebrate that. Bless their give and take, that uh, matters be discussed in honesty and fairness, and, and just uh, that we have faith and confidence that there will be a, a good outcome. So bless them with that. But Lord Almighty, we ask you to also remind us of not just the give and take, but also the receive and the give. That during this uh, season of Thanksgiving, that we have a responsibility in this community to, to be thankful for our blessings. And you've given each and every one of us blessings, certainly. And there are places that are suffering tonight people that are suffering tonight, not just in far off lands, but in our very community. So help us to lead from not just our minds to the give and take, but also from the receive and the give, that we will uh, receive our blessings and be thankful and have gratitude, that we will somehow give those blessings on to others, that, that they may know that, that God loves them, and that the people of this community care for each other, and that we go forward as a family and as a group of uh, folks that, that genuinely want to seek the best in this world. Praise your name. We ask you to be among us tonight, just in, not just in our minds, but in our hearts also, and that the decisions made will, will go forth, that others can have the bounty that we receive in so many ways. We praise you. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Okay. <coughs> Paul. Present. Here. Campbell. Here. Gibson. Here. Bill. Here. Hopper. Here. Lacey. Here. Middleton. <coughs> Here. We do have a quorum. Uh, all of you should have received copies of the minutes for a regular meeting of November the 8th. Do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion, Mr. Alexi. Second. Second. Second, Ms. Betron. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, then roll call on the minutes. Bates. Aye. Betron. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Hill. Aye. Hopper. Aye. Alexi. Abstain. And Williams. Aye. Minutes are approved with a vote of seven to zero with one abstention. Reports from Corporation Council? Uh, none from Corporation Council. Anything we're going to control at this time? Nothing at this time. Other committee board reports, all of you should have received copies of uh, my report from the last RDC meeting. If you have any questions, let me know. Any other committee or board reports? Hearing none, uh, next item on the agenda is public uh, comments. If you're here, wish to address the council concerning an item that is on tonight's agenda, uh, please step to the podium uh, or speak up online, state your name and address for the record, and there's a five minute time limit per person. Seeing none, uh, none moving on ordinances and resolutions. Uh, none under notice of intent to consider first reading ordinance 2344. An ordinance amending the 2024 salary ordinance, common council ordinance number 2333, to provide for flexibility in first class and probationary positions in the fire and police department and create an additional part time firefighter paramedic position, increase part time maximum hourly rates in the fire department, sponsored by Gibson. Do you have a motion? So moved. Motion of Ms. Gibson, second. Second. Secret by Mr. Bates. Uh, any discussion on the council? If we were, if this was explained to us last time. If there are any questions, I'm sure someone here could answer those. 
Hearing none, then roll call. Ordinance 2344, first reading. Bates. Aye. Bates. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Bill. Aye. Offer. Aye. Lexi. Aye. And Williams. Aye. Um, ordinance 2344 is approved in a vote of 8 to 0. Ordinance 2345. An ordinance vacating flat variable with drainage easement, lot 5, Worstville Commerce Center, base 2, sponsored by Campbell. I have a motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Lexi. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Gibson. Any discussion? Any questions? I think we had a presentation in public hearing on all of these last time, so. I believe our petitioner is here if you have any additional questions. All right. uh, the one request I would have from staff is if you were able to uh, waive the rules so that we can have the uh, planning completed before the December holidays, uh, just going into a new construction. All right, well, we'll address that in a moment then. Uh, any discussion on first reading ordinance 2345? Here, then, then roll call ordinance 2345, first reading. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Hill. Aye. Hopper. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. And Bates. Aye. Ordinance 2345 passes first reading 8 to 0. And this, I believe there's a request for suspension of the rules through second, second. readings. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Gibson, second by Mr. Bates. Any discussion? You want this for all of these, right? <clears throat> uh, yes, it would be for all seven with this project, unless you. Well, we'll, um, we'll take them individually. So. Okay. okay. Any discussion on suspension? Here it ends in roll call. Suspension of the rules through second reading, ordinance 2345. Campbell? Aye. Gibson? Aye. Hill? Aye. Hopper. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. 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 Ordinance 2345, rules are suspended through second reading. Now a motion on second reading. So motion by Mr. Bates. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Betron. Any discussion? Hearing none, then roll call. Ordinance 2345, second reading. Gibson. Aye. Hill. Aye. Hopper. Aye. Lexi? Aye. Williams? Aye. Bates? Aye. Bishop? Aye. And Campbell? Aye. Ordinance 2345 passes second reading 8-0. Ordinance 2346. An ordinance making platted access drainage utility easement in lot 4, Worcester Commerce Center, phase 2, sponsored by Campbell. Motion? Second. Motion, Mr. Lexi. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Williams. Any discussion? Here and then roll call, ordinance 2346, first reading. Gil. Aye. Offer. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Betron. Aye. Campbell. Aye. And Gibson. Aye. Ordinance 2346 passes, first reading 8 0. Uh, motion to suspend the rules. Summit. Motion by Mr. Williams, second. Second. By Ms. Betron. Any discussion? And then the roll call and suspension. Offer. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Betron. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Gibson. Aye. And Hill. Aye. Rules are suspended through second reading, ordinance 2346. I have a motion on second reading. Second. Motion by Mr. Lexi. Second. Second by Mr. Bates. Any discussion? And then, then roll call ordinance 2346, second reading. Lexi? Aye. Williams? Aye. Bates? Aye. Bertram? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Gibson? Aye. Hill? Aye. And Hopper? Aye. Ordinance 2346 passes second reading 8 0. Ordinance 2347. An ordinance vacating platted variable width sidewalk easement in lot 4, Worcester Commerce Center, phase 2, sponsored by Campbell. I have a motion. Okay. Motion, Mr. Lexi. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Williams. Any discussion? And then roll call ordinance 2347, second reading. Our first reading. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Hill. Aye. Bates. 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 A
Suspension. So move, Mr. Williams. Second. Second. Mr. Alexi. Uh, roll call on suspension of the rules through second reading ordinance 2347. Aye. 
Okay. Aye. Rules are suspended. Do I have a motion on second reading? So moved. Motion by Mr. Williams. Second. Second. Right. Mr. Lexi, any discussion? And then in roll call, ordinance 2350, second reading. Campbell. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Hill. Aye. Offer. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Okay. Aye. Ordinance 2350 passes first, second reading, uh, eight to zero. Ordinance 2351. An ordinance vacating five variable width, uh, width drainage easement in lot five, Warfield Commerce Center, phase two, sponsored by Campbell. Motion. Motion, Mr. Williams. Second. Second. Mr. Lexi, any discussion? Roll call, ordinance 2351, first reading. Gibson. Aye. Hill. Aye. Offer. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Petron. Aye. And Campbell. Aye. Ordinance 2351 passes first reading 8 0. Motion on suspension. So moved. Mr. Williams, second. Second. Mr. Bates. Roll call on suspension through second reading. Ordinance 2351. Hill. Aye. Hopper. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Petron. Aye. Campbell. Aye. And Gibson. Aye. Rules are suspended. Motion on second reading. So moved. So moved. Motion by Mr. Bates. Second. Second by Mr. Lexi. Any discussion? Okay, then in roll call. Ordinance 2351, second reading. Hopper. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Fennell. Oh, excuse me. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Petron. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Gibson, aye, and Hill. Aye. Ordinance 2351 passes second reading at zero. That's the last one, isn't it? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Good job, Janine. <laughs> Next, one of, <laughs> Next one on the list, ordinance 2352. In order to amend the Texas Agreement Municipal Code 1993, Chapter 8, Chapter Parking Regulations, Article 6, Section 8 5, no right turn and right designations, so field. The designation at Madison Avenue and Smith Valley Road and to designate the right turn on red at the intersection of Main Street and Madison Avenue. Sponsored by Gibson. There are a motion. Second. Motion by Ms. Gibson. Second. Second, Mr. Lexi. <coughs> Mr. St. John. Good evening, Mark St. John, City Engineer. Um, after the meeting two weeks ago, I just wanted to put together a little additional information and touch base with you all on why this ordinance is before you and why we recommended it. Um, so I want to start out by saying I know right turns on red have been the news quite a bit recently. Um, we're not just trying to blanket a no right turn on red downtown Greenwood, kind of like they did on the Miles Square in, in, in Indianapolis. There are specific reasons for this, and it is uh, listed out here in the <coughs> ordinance. Uh, it's uh, about the fourth paragraph down. Uh, the, the top reason, the main reason listed there is because of site distance for traffic. Uh, that's what this exhibit here is showing. Uh, three of the four lights of this intersection, if you stop behind the pedestrian crosswalk at the stop bar, you cannot see down the road to safely make a right hand turn on red. You would not be able to see if there's oncoming traffic there, and that's because of the placement of the, the existing buildings. Uh, the second reason is the smaller turning radiuses. Uh, that was a design decision that was made. Um, we wanted to include more space for our businesses, more space for people to congregate downtown, more space for people to feel safe downtown. Um, so there's a slightly smaller turning radiuses on several of these intersections, particularly the, the northbound and eastbound movement. So if you're in a particularly a larger vehicle, it takes you longer to make that turn. Uh, so if you're turning right on red and there's incoming traffic at you, it can be an unsafe movement. Um, the delayed signal phasing is listed in the ordinance. Uh, this is particularly the, the northbound left turn has a, a leading left turn, so you get that green arrow before the southbound has a, a, a green light. So if you're heading southbound, you think I can turn right on red, you might be in conflict with a vehicle turning leftbound, that's northbound to, to westbound. Uh, and then the, the final reason listed in the ordinance is the possibility of pedestrian conflicts. Um, this kind of ties back into not being able to see around the buildings. So on the <coughs> corner intersection, you can't see around the building and you wouldn't be able to see pedestrians in the crosswalk, um, which would have the pedestrian phase for the offset movement on the red light. So um, that's a 
how you look at it, real quick look at it, but I just wanted to give you some additional insight and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, any questions? This is one that I'm trying to visualize since this is going to be a new um, pattern. Uh, no right. So I assume there'll be a, a signage there with that the board of motorists to do that. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, it's actually already up. So there is no right here, not right signage um, pretty much by that that signal head. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. Any discussion on the council? I saw some people the other night congregating on the sidewalk, and I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, There's, there are about 10 people at 8 p.m. on the sidewalks on both sides. Good. All right. Any other discussion, comments? Hearing none, then roll call. First read, ordinance 2352. Lexi. Aye. Williams. Aye. 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 Aye.
Motion by Ms. Gibson, second. Second. Second by Mr. Bates. Any discussion? Hearing none, then roll call. Ordinance 2341, second reading. Campbell. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Taylor. Aye. Popper. Aye. Lexi. Williams. Aye. Bates. Aye. Aye. Ordinance 2341 passes second reading 8 0. New business, introduction of new ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance 2354. An ordinance vacating public right of way on the west side of Meridian Street, south of Serena Way, and north of Smith Valley Road, sponsored by Hopper. Anybody want to talk about this one? Hi, Karen Collins with AF Engineering. Thank you. Floor is yours. Sure. So I am um, hereby filing the petition on behalf of 523 Madison Townhomes LLC and 523 Madison Apartments LLC to vacate um, the right of way on the west side of Meridian in front of blocks C and blocks D, which are in front of the new townhomes that are going in. And then block F, which is, uh, um, there's a parking lot um, which is also has apartments that, that face uh, Madison. So we're asking to um, vacate a portion of those of those um, rights of way. And then after that vacation has um, been granted, we will replat mm -hmm. or do another subplat for blocks um, C and blocks D and then blocks F to clean everything up and to um, incorporate that, that new vacated areas into the blocks that are platted adjacent to it. All right. Any questions? This time? All right. Thank you. Appreciate uh, you being here tonight. Anyone else wish to talk about this? All right. <clears throat> uh, no questions from the council? <clears throat> All right, moving on. Resolution 2322. A resolution of the Greenwood Common Council approving an interlocal cooperation agreement between the city of Greenwood and the consolidated city of Indianapolis and Marion County, Indiana, regarding certain road improvements to the East County Line Road, Ring Road, sponsored by Gibson. Mr. St. John. Good evening again, Mark St. John, city engineer. Um, this resolution, as it was raised for an interlocal agreement with the city of Indianapolis, they are looking at constructing a roundabout at the intersection of uh, County Line Road and Graham Road, that's Arlington Road in Indianapolis. Um, this interlocal is required uh, by state law. It outlines responsibilities for Indianapolis and the responsibilities for the city of Greenwood. Happy to answer any questions you all may have. Is Greenwood paying for any portion of this? We are not <laughs> responsible for any cost of this project. Any other questions? When did you see that happen? I not sure what their construction timeline is. Uh, I think it's probably within the next uh, one to three years. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. Resolution 2323. The resolution of the Green Common Council expressing interest in the purchase of certain real properties on Smith Valley Road, sponsored by Campbell and Hopper. You want to talk about this one too? Yes. So this is. Um, we all know about the roundabout we're constructing at Smith Valley Road and Road. I believe most of you know we're also looking to replace the signal on Smith Valley Road and Woodman Boulevard, which is the intersection for the high school entrance. Um, there are some parcels we need to acquire from the school property, various school entities that own them. The schools ask that we pay for them, and one of the parcels exceeds $25,000 in cost. And so, by state law, we have to come before you tonight and ask that you express interest in purchasing this real estate. All right, thank you. Any questions? I just, um, how do you see this as being uh, more safe, uh, safe uh, for egress and egress of, uh, of the high schoolers? You know? Yeah, so a couple of reasons. Uh, roundabouts have been studied pretty extensively, especially in the last 20 years. They're shown to have lots of uh, proven safety benefits. Uh, the, the biggest one is they take away probably the danger, most dangerous move that you can make at an intersection, which is a, a left turn. Um, they eliminate that. Um, the, the other thing that'll work well at this intersection is with the roundabout at Smith Valley and Haywick. 
uh, it'll actually work better in conjunction if they're both roundabout. So if we leave one of those a signal, it could impact the operations of the downstream roundabout. So. What do you what do you see as the timeline? Um, so the hope, uh, best case, is we could trip it next summer. Uh, the design has moved along. We're at a, a place where we can procure this work. Uh, there are a large amount of utilities we need to get out of the way, uh, particularly Duke Energy and Duke Energy Transmission on the south side of the road. Um, and so next summer might just be utility relocation work with the construction of the roundabout being done this following summer. We do need to finance this request. Uh, correct. This is the financing of the redevelopment commission. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you. This lady's business. This is the second opportunity for members of the public to address the council this time concerning items that are not on tonight's agenda. So if you're here and wish to do so or online, please speak up. Uh, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, moving on. Uh, miscellaneous council business. I have a, a few things, but first, uh, you may have noticed. Uh, Judge Luke Gregory is here tonight, and he's asked uh, to be able to speak to the council tonight. So, Judge, the microphone is yours. Thank you, Mr. Campbell, and the other members of the council. I wanted to come in this evening as I stand on the threshold. Uh, Leaving my position with the city, it's a position I've held for 28 years. It's a job that I have grown to love, uh, even with the works on it. Uh, I wanted to, before I say anything else, I want to tell you, in case you don't know, but I suspect you all do, that Greenwood has been blessed over these years with a great many amazing, talented individuals who have devoted a uh, significant amount of your professional energies uh, to helping Greenwood become a leader, a leader in Indiana in terms of city courts and city court services. As you may or may not know, many of the folks who have passed through our court over the last number of years have been people who have significant alcohol or drug problems. Uh, society as well as people directly uh, involved benefit when the use and abuse of controlled substances is stopped. We have become a leader in Indiana in developing methods to accomplish this. Part of, part of the philosophical basis of what we have done came as a result of the five years that I spent as chairman of the Indiana Parole Board. I had the opportunity to go into the prisons, talk to the inmates, uh, either formally uh, in hearings, or often I would walk into the cell block and see somebody and I sit down and just talk to them, uh, which I tell you is really the best way to get honest information. And I heard a great many stories, stories from murderers, thieves, drug dealers, rapists, child molesters, talking about how they ended up in their predicament, what got them to that point. And almost, <clears throat> if you <clears throat> pardon me, sorry, if you exclude uh, mental illness or retardation, uh, a huge majority of people were there because of a, a dependence on drugs and alcohol. Putting them in prison stopped them from doing that for the most part for a period of time. It made society safer while they were in prison. But at the same time, society was spending eighty to hundred thousand dollars a year for their confinement, and it has always occurred to me that perhaps we, as a community, would be better served if folks never actually got to the point of going to prison, committing major felonies, and having to be put away, sometimes for life. Starting at the beginning, when I first arrived here in 1996, I had campaigned on the promise to create a probation department for Greenland. I frankly had thought that I could induce the county to come up and take care of things for us. 
I failed at that. They told me unequivocally, no, that they're not going to spend dollars from county taxpayers to take care of the people they agree with. Uh, so, with that rejection, I'm sitting in my office thinking, well, how am I going to accomplish this? Uh, I had talked to the city council and your predecessors. They all loved the idea, but they didn't really want to put any city money into it. Actually, it's not really fair. There was no city money to put into it. And so I got creative. I began a probation, uh, I began building a probation department. Our county prosecutor, Lance Sander, uh, gave $5,000 for you to get it started. Uh, not a whole lot of money when you think about all the things you have to have, but it was great. It got us through the first three months. We began with a part-time probation officer. We built a system that exists today where we have a probation department that at times has consisted of as many as six probation officers and support staff. We have a state certified alcohol and drug treatment program. We have a problem solving court for drug and alcohol uh, dependent people. Uh, we have a state certified, in fact, ours was the first certified program in the nation. When we started out, we were one of the first in Indiana, and today there are over 25 pro programs like ours across the country. Although as far as I know, except for ours, they're all funded by either state or local dollars. Ours is funded entirely by fees for probationers, uh, alcohol service fees, uh, grants. We've received over $2 million in grants through the years. Uh, people really like how we put things together. We hold people accountable. At the beginning of their probation period, most of the probationers have been drug tested twice a week, randomly. They're called and told to come in somewhere during the course of the day, and we have an observed uh, drug screen. At, after they've been in the program a little while, it drops back to once a week. If someone is using drugs or alcohol, it will show up on, on the drug screen. Then it, it is brought to court, and there is a determination by the judge that there's been a violation of probation. They always, always, always go to jail. Generally, I, I use four days. The reason for four days is that there have been scientific studies conducted for the last 20 years that show that when a person is incarcerated, the first four days are the worst. They're in a new environment. They're worried about their job. They're worried about this, that, and everything else. Uh, they're worried about getting beaten up. Uh, but after four days, they start settling in. They get their main favorite movies on TV. They can stay up late at night and still have breakfast the next morning. So I put it in for the first awful four days. Um, in 2013, I began seeing a lot more veterans coming into our court. They had been deployed overseas. They had volunteered. They, they, some of our best, most outstanding citizens have volunteered. They've gone to the wars in the Middle East and Afghanistan. And many of them have come back horribly damaged. I could tell you stories until it was time for breakfast, but I'll spare you all that. Uh, but they are, they are amazing people. They, they were good, honest, solid citizens when they left. They came back with post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, TBI. Uh, it, uh, long, long list of things. We've had a, a full bird count colonel in our program. It has six deployments to Afghanistan. He got back, got together with his uh, sergeant major. They got Rick Snorton drunk, and he tried to drive home. <clears throat> he came into the veterans program, and I don't know how well we did with him because I lost track of him. Uh, Ten months in, he came to me and said that his career in the military is over because of the drunk driving profession. He'll be retiring in a couple of years. And he's been offered an opportunity to take another uh, unit to Afghanistan. Right? But he couldn't do it unless he was done with the veterans tour. Thought about it. I gave a special treatment. I'm glad I did. We ended his uh, participation in the program at 10 months. 
He went to Afghanistan. I heard he came back. I, I heard that he had a nice ceremony, and then I don't know what it must have become of him since. We have people from special forces. People have done <clears throat> the most incredible things. They can't talk about them. We created an impact panel for our most dangerous drivers, the ones who are doing 100 miles an hour down Smith Valley Road. And yeah, they do do that. Uh, it is a program that we've had since about 2008, and it's headed by the uh, medical director of Rowan Bush Veterans Hospital, and he was a former uh, medical surgical director of Wishart Hospital when we got started. Uh, I don't really have any stats for that program, but I, I do feel that it has an impact. I see the people coming in, and then I watch them coming out. Some of them are affected, hard to say how many. We started a community service work project that resulted in our adult, adult probationers performing thousands of hours of unpaid work for local charities and churches, as well as picking up trash alongside city streets. In each of several years, uh, the amount of work each year exceeded 15,000 hours. In my 28 years of service, all of these programs have received few, very few tax dollars. We recently, the city offered us to uh, have all the space in the uh, Greenwood Justice Center. Uh, that's for our, our program people, our probation people and the others. Um, and that was at no cost to us. And I'm immensely grateful for that. But we've always paid our salaries and other, other costs out of uh, user fees and grants. Now you're wondering, some of you probably, whether we've actually accomplished anything. Yeah, we've got some neat stuff to talk about, but did we really change anything? Well, a few years ago, the Hudson Institute and Indiana University approached me about doing an outcome study of our recovery board graduates. They did that study. They traced every single graduate at, oh, at that time. Uh, over 50 states looking at arrest records. Anything from public intoxication to murder, they would have found out about. Uh, anything where a person is, was uh, uh, arrested or summons uh, that involved a probable cause affidavit and a, an entry into one of the computer programs. They found that 95% of our recovery board graduates have never had another single law enforcement encounter other than routine traffic to this, 95%. By way of comparison, a heroin addict, which has ended up becoming specialized in, a heroin addict who walks into a treatment center has less than a 10% chance of staying clean for a year after he gets out of the treatment center. There's probably a great deal more I should say, you probably want to say, but I've taken up enough of your time this evening. I want to thank you for your attention. I'd like to thank you for your support through the years. I will bid you a, a very fond farewell, and may you have a happy Christmas. Thank you all. Thank you, Judge. All right, a couple more things um, that I have. Uh, one, uh, city engineer, uh, Mr. St. John, sent all this information earlier uh, in the last week concerning a couple projects that we're asking the, the Indianapolis Metropolitan Planning Organization to help us fund. And uh, as part of that, uh, it was... We have letters here. If you support that project, uh, we would ask you to sign these letters. Uh, it's not, it doesn't need to vote just individually. If you support this, sign these, and then they'll be submitted. Uh, there's a collaboration, collaborative information here as well. So I'm gonna pass, there's two. I'm gonna pass one this direction, one this direction. When it gets down, if you can send them back, uh, so you can take a look at those and uh, hopefully you looked at the information that was sent to us ahead of time. But 
Um, we, again, if you support those, please sign those and we'll get those back to St. John Steve. Um, the other thing, just a reminder, I believe I sent all of the information out that, uh, about the uh, uh, appointments that we make every year. And uh, this year, there'll be several appointments. So a lot of the appointments are four-year appointments. We always make them at the beginning of our term. So those will be done on our first meeting, which is of 2024, which is January the 3rd, I think, uh, on a Wednesday evening. Uh, most everybody I've talked to so far has said they're willing to uh, continue in that position. And uh, so uh, just that helps a little bit, but I just feel you'll know ahead of time to have some uh, time to think about that. The only exception to that is uh, the RDC appointments because of bonding issues we've had in the past. The RDC has asked us to make those appointments in December. So th those are appointments we make every year. And currently myself and uh, Mr. Hopper serve as the council appointees to the RDC. We will make those appointments at our first meeting in December, which is December 4th. The first meeting in December, which I think is the 4th. Um, we'll make those appointments on that evening. Just and Mr. Hopper and I both would like to continue uh, in that position on the RDC. Um, one more thing, uh, and we have our most recently elected officials here with us tonight. But the AIM uh, Association of uh, Indiana Municipalities offers a uh, course for newly elected officials. I took that course uh, when I. First uh, was elected, uh, found it to be very beneficial, and uh, the, the part of the council's budget is money to reimburse you if uh, for the tuition if you uh, decide to do that. So I would encourage uh, anyone uh, who's newly elected to um, take that course. I think it's very beneficial, and if you've never taken it, and I would. No matter how long you've been on the council, I would encourage you possibly to take that as well. Uh, it's a good course. And like I said, the, uh, the city will uh, be happy to reimburse you for the tuition costs. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else anything from council business? All right. Uh, I guess I put my glasses on so I read the paper. Right, anything with a controller or corporation council? Nothing with the corporation council. Anything with a controller? Nothing for me. Anything with the mayor? We are adjourned.